there were several ad which featured and they were extending their greetings towards this Prakash Utsa or Gurpura. So UPSC as you know has been asking question based on Bhakti movement and one can easily say that uh, one of the most prominent saint from that movement that is Bhakti movement who emerged from that movement is Guru Nanak Dev Ji. So before taking up the question we will take some key information we will uh, look into some key facts related to Guru Nanak Dev Ji and then we will move on to take up the question. So he was founder of the Sikh religion as you all know. He was a prominent saint who greatly appreciated the teaching of Kabir, another Bhakti saint. Guru Nanak was born at uh, village Talwandi near Lahore in the year 1469. His beliefs include that uh, he believed that the married life and secular business did not obstruct the spiritual progress and emancipation of man. So you don't need to renounce the family. Okay. Because according to him, married life and uh, secular business, uh, they do not obstruct the spiritual progress of a person. Fine. Thirdly, he said that Guru, uh, he led much impress on the oneness of God as truth and fraternity of men, righteous living and the social virtues of dignity of labor and charity. Fine. Further, he believed in God as the omnipotent reality and the human soul could attain union with him through love and devotion, which is the basic proponent of entire bhakti movement. That there should be uh, no bars of or the compulsions of rituals. Okay, there should be no compulsion and then there should be no intermediary between you and God. So, through love and devotion, one can attain the salvation or the reach out to the God. So this is same as that was the prominent theme of the Bhakti movement. So as he said that not by knowledge of ceremonial observance. Okay. Nanak preached in the language of the people. Okay. As was true with the, all the Bhakti saints that they used vernacular language which made, uh, which was helpful in uh, further expansion of bhakti movement in India. Okay, so on the similar line, he preached in the language of the people and his preachings become very popular during his lifetime itself. His disciples included both Hindus and Muslims. He decried caste system and challenged the monopoly of his spiritual evolution and religious sanctity of higher castes. Fine. So, these were some important information related to Guru Nanak Dev Ji. Now, let's uh, move on to take the question. And as you know, in 2019, UPSC asked question based on Saint Nimbark, Kabir and Sheikh Ahmad Sarhindi. Okay. So, we have taken up a question based on Sikhism. You have to identify the correct statement. And a statement one says, Gurmukhi script was introduced by Guru Nanak in which he wrote his religious teachings. Now this statement is incorrect. As uh, Guru Nanak uh, Dev chose uh, Bhai Lehna as his successor, who was later named as Guru Angad and he was second Guru. Okay, He was the one who introduced Gurmukhi script. Okay, so it was not Guru Nanak, it was Guru Lehna, which uh, later named as Guru Angad Dev. Okay, and further, uh, Guru, if there is a question that who started the Langar, so answer would be Guru Nanak Dev Ji started the Langar, culture of Langar, Guru Ka Langar. But it was Guru Angad who popularized it and expanded the scope. Okay, so first statement is incorrect. Now the second statement says Adi Granth was installed installed for the first time as holy book of the Sikhs by Guru Angad. Now this is again an incorrect statement because it was fifth Guru that is Guru Arjun Dev. Fine. Who, who is also credited uh, for building the golden temple in Amritsar 
and uh, he was the one who uh, for the first time installed uh, the holy book of the sikh uh, that is adi granth so as you had to find the correct statement both the statements are incorrect so answer would be d that is neither one nor two okay so let's move on to the next question uh, which is based on this news which featured on page number 6 of the hindu newspaper and as we discussed that uh, there is a tiger uh, who killed a women recently now forest officials have uh, are getting closer to uh, catch him fine so this is news regarding that and brief regarding that that they are closing into and they are nearing to capture this tiger so as you know that uh, conservation reserves including national park tiger reserve have been important theme from the perspective of upsc examination as you can see here in 2019 itself it has asked uh, it has given you various uh, wildlife centuries name of various wildlife century and tiger reserves and they asked you which among them were part of agastha malai biosphere reserve so we have taken up similar question and we have asked that which among the following are part of first biosphere reserve now you uh, might know that uh, you might be aware of the fact that first biosphere res uh, biosphere reserve in india was nilgiri biosphere reserve so this question is about nilgiri biosphere reserve of which bandipur is also a part of so bandipur bandipur basically was a private hunt space of the king of mysore the erstwhile uh, princely state of mysore and uh, along with several other which we will see later uh, um, uh, tiger reserves it forms one of the largest contiguous protected zone okay in india so you have to find uh, which among the following are part of this nilgiri biosphere reserves so let us look uh, quickly look into the facts related to nilgiri biosphere reserve so nilgiri biosphere reserve uh, is a reserve which is located in nilgiri mountain of the western ghats in southern india okay it uh, extends in major uh, it extend into three state that is uh, karnataka tamil nadu and kerala okay and the uh, which all are wildlife sanctuaries or uh, protected areas which uh, constitute this nilgiri biosphere reserves have been listed here that mudumalai national park mukurti national park satya mangala wildlife sanctuary these three are in the state of tamil nadu while nagarhol bandipur both are in karnataka okay silent valley national park aralam wildlife sanctuary venad wildlife sanctuary and karimpuza wildlife sanctuary are in kerala all these combined to form nilgiri biosphere reserve they are part of nilgiri biosphere reserve further it was the first uh, uh, site to be declared under unesco's man and biosphere program as biosphere reserve in india it was year 1986 it was first biosphere of a reserve of india and uh, another important fact related to nilgiri biosphere reserve is the number of tribal groups like uh, badagas toda kotas irula karumba panya adiyan idandan chetis alar and malayan are native to this reserve reserve so from these names you will understand that uh, our answer would be c that is uh, nagarhol bandipur aralam venad now i told you along with some other so these uh, are nagarhol bandipur apart from that muddumalai okay these three these three forms the largest contiguous protected zone okay the nagarhol bandipur muddumalai these three form the and and uh, venad these four form the largest contiguous protected zone okay so our answer would be c so let's move on to the next question which uh, which is inspired from this news article which featured on the science page of the hindu newspaper and uh, it is about piezo electricity and uh, related they have explained what is it what are its, its uses so we have taken up a question based on the piezo electric effect uh, because upsc 
keep asking question uh, keep asking questions from various scientific discoveries laws mechanism or uh, effects etc as you can see in 2018 they have asked a question based on general theory of relativity itself okay so we have taken up a question based on piezo electric effect and you have to identify the correct statements so statement 1 says it is ability of material to generate a magnetic field in response to an applied current fine second statement says the effect can only be observed in metals now both the statements are incorrect we'll tell you why the best example the most common example that you can see uh, around you is a lighter okay so piezo electricity is nothing but you will apply the mechanical stress okay so the mechanical stress or the mechanical force will be converted into electric current and in lighters what happens there is an inflammable fluid uh, which is filled in the lighter so when you are applying mechanical stress it will create an electric current and due to that current this fuel will ignite and that's how lighter will work now another example that you can understand that you might have uh, witnessed that while uh, climbing up some ladders you will find that lights are getting switched on when you are keeping your uh, legs on that particular step of the stair so what you are doing you are putting a pressure mechanical pressure now this mechanical pressure is getting transformed into electric current and that is how the light is getting switched on so this is a direct application of piezoelectric effect there is an indirect effect also where an electric current or electric uh, signal can be converted into a mechanical uh, wave or uh, mechanical stress as you can see in use of your headphones where an electric signal comes from your connected device it creates a vibration and you hear the so uh, song or sound whatever it is okay so it is a reverse use of piezo electricity fine so direct you are putting mechanical stress and electric current is generated and the reverse process is reverse piezo electric effect now metals like quartz ceramic there are several uh, uh, material in general uh, which show uh, which show response of or uh, effect of piezoelectric effect apart from that there are some uh, biological substance also like your bones your tendon muscles because of their complex structure they also create piezoelectric effect fine so both the statement are incorrect as it is saying that it generates a magnetic field in in response uh, to an applied current which is incorrect it creates an current in response to a mechanical stress second says only in metals which is also incorrect you can see it in biological substance also so both the statements are incorrect okay so the last question from the prelims perspective in today's session uh, is inspired from this news article which featured on page number 17 of uh, indian express newspaper and the context is that indian banks are uh, sitting on over 93000 crore approx of unsecured loans now what is unsecured loans you don't need a collateral to get the loan so the security behind these loans are null there is no security behind these loan okay because you are not giving any guarantee against the money you are taking up so this is uh, in crude terms you can understand these are the unsecured loans so indian banks are uh, sitting on over around 93000 crore of unsecured loan which are in special mention account category okay now these special mention accounts are almost 7% of the total unsecured loan which is a way bigger amount that uh, stands at around 13.32 lakh crore so total unsecured loan is around 13.32 crore lakh crore sorry while
sorry <coughs> the special mention account category constitute around 93000 crore okay so as you can see upsc always ask question related to mobilization of resources banking se uh, sector or uh, overall economic prospect of the country as in 2018 they have asked a question specifically based on the role of the banks regarding the capital infusion okay so we have taken up a, an a mcq based on a special mention account so we will see both the statement together and then we will look into what is it what is it all about so you have to identify the correct statement statement 1 says sma were introduced by scheduled commercial banks to identify stressed asset in their balance sheet fine second statement says if the principal or interest payment is overdue for more than 90 days then the loan is categorized as sma now let's understand what is sma now there are stressed asset what is this stressed asset now bank is uh, just monitoring let's say uh, somebody name uh, x taken some amount of loan from bank now there is a principal amount now there is some interest due date is first of every month but now bank is observing that the person is not able to pay the interest or principal amount in time and both are getting delayed again and again and again now bank what what they will do they will categorize this that okay there is some kind of threat that this will become a, a non performing asset in future okay so there are two level of categorization the lower level is sma that is special mention and when it crosses some threshold it becomes npa okay so first thing that uh, first statement says it is introduced by scheduled commercial banks no it is introduced by rbi to identified incipient stress in the assets of bank and nbfcs these are the account that have not yet turned npas okay so the first level but rather these account can potentially become npas in future if no suitable action is taken fine so what is sma uh, there are three sub categories sma 0 sma 1 and sma 2 now if you are delaying the payment okay uh, so the first sma 0 is principal or interest payment not overdue for more than 30 days okay there there is some delay but not more than 30 but account showing signs of incipient stresses okay now you can see that uh, balance is not being maintained okay there are frequent withdrawal okay balance is depleting so there are signs of a st a stress but you are somehow able to manage to repay within 30 day of sp uh, the stipulated time now when it will go beyond 30 days and uh, before 60 days that is beyond one month but before two month it will be categorized as sma 1 now if it is overdue beyond two months till three months it will be categorized as sma 2 now if it goes beyond three months it will be categorized as npa that is not non performing assets okay so it again it will be sub standard doubtful and lost so sub standard is from 3 month to 1 year doubtful greater than 1 year now lost asset is the identify the bank or rbi but the amount has not been written off fully okay now even beyond 1 year great uh, a long time has been passed but uh, no recovery has been instituted and uh, this amount has not been written off wholly okay so as said the first statement is incorrect it was introduced by rbi now if the principal or interest is overdue for more than 90 days now you know that it will become npa and will not remain sma 
so this also uh, an incorrect statement so our answer would be d that is neither one nor two fine so that's all from the point of prelims discussion